today the paper that I'm going to present uh, is called as Deep Fusion CAN for text to image synthesis. Um, it's an architecture for, uh, uh, it's a GAN based architecture, which uh, is basically used to uh, generate images from text in, uh, text descriptions. So these are the contents that uh, I want to go over today. Uh, first, the basic context of uh, everything that is that has been discussed in the paper and some problems which uh, these uh, different uh, these different research works had, which this paper tries to solve. Then the actual algorithm and the experiments that they run and the results, and finally the collaboration study that they have conducted. Uh, so very, something very basic. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with the GAN architecture, it's basically an architecture um, which has two components. One is the generator and the disc uh, another is the discriminator component. The generator basically aims to uh, take some random noise or something like a Gaussian distribution, uh, something like that, and then generate some data out of it uh, based on either, uh, either uh, just using the random noise or based on some prior or conditions. It generates, uh, generates some uh, data, which is then passed on to the discriminator along with uh, some original data. So basically the data that is generated by the generator network is called as the fake data or synthetic data. And then there is actual data that we want the discriminator to find difference between. So whenever the data is um, uh, from the generator, it should tell that the data is fake or not, uh, not the real data. And whenever the data is real, the discriminator should be able to discriminate as, uh, it as real. So this uh, is basically a min-max game-based uh, strategy of training these models. And uh, the basic goal of discriminator is to get better at finding the difference between real and fake data. And the generator, for, for the generator, the goal is to generate uh, data as good as the real one so that the discriminator cannot discriminate between them. Okay, so the work that has already been done in text to image generation, uh, the, the work actually isn't starting from the stack can uh, architecture, but it started uh, a little bit earlier than this, but that work isn't uh, something that uh, is going to create too much difference in the content ahead. So I haven't included that, but just for people who are interested to know that. So stack can basically uses a series of, it proposes the use of series of generator discriminator network to generate progressively better images. Uh, of different scale, given the text description. Uh, then came the attention GAN network, which uh, basically introduced the use of cross-modal attention. We'll see what that mechanism is. But basically it uses spatial uh, uh, attention mechanism, which uh, basically is to find the relationship between the text uh, to each pixel in the image or each pixel as the image progresses through the generator network. Then there is SDGAN, which uses the Siamese structure to find the uh, find the effect of uh, the semantic effect of the text on the images. Uh, we'll see how this also works because this is something that is very uh, closely related to the problem that uh, this paper tries to solve. Um, then there's also Objective GAN, and then there's also DMGAN. Uh, Objective GAN basically uses some additional information along with the test uh, text description. Uh, it uses the bounding boxes and uh, it tries to uh, optimize the model using that. It uses a faster RCNN uh, architecture to compute object-wise uh, object loss, which helps the model to learn better. So since this uh, op objective GAN uses something additional to the text description, this is not part of the experimentation process that uh, the paper has. Uh, and then there's uh, DMGAN which basically uses a memory network to solve some of the issues that will be seen ahead. Uh, but it still isn't something that is uh, substantial enough to sustain because it uh, uses an additional network which creates uh, additional computation load. So the idea that stack, uh, stack GAN uh, uh, proposed was of a stacked architecture of uh, generator discriminator network. So as I said that uh, they, uh, the idea is to basically uh, progressively improve or progressively generate better and better images. So uh, it introduced something called as conditional augmentation. So the text description is first passed through a, a encoder uh, and the embedding is then passed on 
uh, and uh, conditional augmentation is performed using the noise sample uh, from a normal distribution here. And then this, uh, this information re uh, related to the text description uh, is then concatenated or is then stacked basically with the noise that has been sampled and then this uh, is passed through a upsampling block to generate finally an image uh, of 64 by 64 um, which is then uh, passed on with the real data to the first, uh, stage one discriminator to see if the discriminator can find the difference between this uh, image uh, the real image uh, or and the synthetic image or not so along with this this green portion is the same as this green portion it's basically the embedding of the text description passed uh, along so the idea behind passing the text description along with the uh, feature, uh, the compressed features uh, of the image is that we want to find uh, images that are uh, good uh, in, uh, in terms of visual representation, but we also want, also want to find images um, which are actually close to what the text description says it is. So that's uh, the idea. And then, th uh, then this image uh, is basically again, uh, passed to the second stage discriminator as well. These are embeddings. And this embedding now condition, conditioned embedding is then added again with the stage one result. So this result is then passed here. And along with that, this embedding is passed here with again conditional augmenting the same process which is uh, being performed here. And then the same process is basically repeated with some additional residual blocks and we get an image of 256 by 256, uh, which is then passed to the stage two discriminator with the same process of adding the textual embedding as well. So uh, this progressively generates some image, uh, which we finally get of 256 by 256, still not uh, a very uh, good resolution that we want for the image. After that, the second important, uh, second important conte uh, context here is the use of attention GAN, which basically uses a cross-modal attention mechanism. So what this mechanism basically is, is that uh, it tries to find the relationship between the textual information. So this textual information, complete textual information at once, but each pixel in the feature maps and the final image as well. So uh, basically at each stage, as you can see, it again is a multi-stage uh, or multi-generator discriminator network-based architecture. So basically, again, based off the stack architecture uh, yeah, only. So what it basically tries to do by using the cross-modal attention mechanism is that it tries to find relationship between the, uh, this entire text to each pixel in the image or each pixel in the feature map uh, as it is generated progressively. So that's something it tries to do. So it uses spatial uh, attention uh, mechanism in which uh, basically as the image size grows so does the computational uh, cost because uh, then we have more pixels to relate this information to so this is something that this uh, work uh, proposed to do um, then there is SDGAN so uh, in SDGAN uh, basically it uses a Siamese structure for contrastive loss so what it does is it takes all the different discriminator, uh, discriminator losses and uh, it uses the Siamese architecture along with something called as conditional batch normalization, which we'll be talking about in a while. Uh, so at different stages, what it does is it uh, tries to find the contrastive loss uh, uh, in this exact way where there are multiple networks and uh, after each uh, generator discriminator network, there's a contrastive loss, which is minimized so as to get a uh, better representation finally. So the important part of uh, this architecture is first of all, this uh, architecture in which they use this Siamese uh, style structure. And along with that, there's something called as conditional batch normalization, which is performed a little bit more on that later. So these were the three basic uh, uh, priors that were needed or basic, um, context, uh, basic context that was needed. Now, the problems that this paper tries to work on uh, and the problems that uh, they found in previous work that uh, we have just seen are as follows. First is the use of multiple generator discriminator network to generate images of different scale. So as you might have noticed that uh, each of the networks that we just saw, each of them use a stacked architecture similar to the stack GAN model, stack GAN or stack GAN++. Uh, model. So uh, it uh, what the idea is to uh, progressively find better and better images. 
So there are some problems that they have mentioned in the paper related to this uh, style of uh, or this architecture is that first of all, it's uh, obviously very costly to generate these images this way because we have multiple networks to optimize uh, and train. Then the images uh, at later stages, if you can see uh, that these are stage one images and these are then stage two images. So the images at stage one uh, actually very heavily affect how the images will be generated at stage two. So this is something very intuitive when we are talking about a series of model which are connected like uh, uh, the end of one is the beginning of another. So in this fashion, so uh, it's very intuitive that uh, if this image is not properly generated, then the next image won't be generated uh, properly either. But uh, this is uh, one problem that if this image or the uh, previous image is bad at some stage, then the further stages of uh, generator discriminator network will also perform badly. and. Uh, the image finally generated won't be as pleasing as we wanted it to be or as accurate as it uh, was supposed to be. And the third problem is that uh, each discriminator works on image of different scale and uh, then combining the losses, if you have seen that the contrastive loss is used in the uh, SDGAN uh, architecture. So the discriminator network works on different scales because this image uh, might be of 64 by 64. This image will be of 256 by 256. This is basically result from the StatGAN, but it's true for all, all the models that we are the architectures that we have seen uh, right now. So basically uh, optimizing all the different discriminator losses uh, uh, or by combining them together. Uh, is something very trivial and would lead to instability. As we all know that uh, uh, GANs are infamous for being very unstable to train, instable to train. So this is something uh, that they have noticed as problem as well. So this is the first, uh, these are the, uh, this is the first set of problems that they have uh, discovered from the uh, stacked generator discriminator network idea. Uh, then the second problem mainly focuses on how the text and image information is fused together. So uh, like in the basic uh, stack GAN architecture, the image, the image and uh, sorry, not the image, the noise along with the text information is concatenated together directly. Uh, so that is something uh, that they have called to be very naive approach or something very basic approach. And uh, they uh, and as we have seen that they, they don't result in some very uh, pleasing images or accurate images. So that is one way to do that, that has been proposed earlier. Then there's cross modal attention. Uh, again, it's basically each pixel taken uh, to uh, find the relationship with the textual information, how closely it can be associated with that textual information. And then third is conditional batch normalization. So basically here you can see the conditional batch normalization. So uh, at each uh, stage or at each uh, upscaling block uh, in the generator network. What we want to do uh, in conditional batch normalization is perform some uh, affine transformation uh, along with using this sentence or feature uh, vector for the you know, textual information and using some uh, multilayer perceptron model and finding a value uh, or parameter which we will then use to uh, finally condition the block after performing the affine transformation, this might not be very clear from this image, what uh, I'm talking about, but uh, in a later slide, it's more visible because they have presented that uh, in the paper as well. So simple concatenation of text and images is something that uh, didn't work. And uh, this is the work that I was talking about that this was the initial work, uh, not stack GAN uh, in text to image synthesis. And uh, this uh, approach also uses what stack GAN uses basically, uh, uh, concatenating the uh, textual information with the noise. Uh, we have talked about cross uh, model attention as well. So the problem basically is that as the size grows, uh, so does the computation cost. And also one more problem with cross model attention is that uh, we generally don't associate the textual information because the textual information is going to be somewhat like 100 words, 200 words at maximum, uh, not even that long because then we want uh, the encoder to finally get a feature vector of something like 256 or maybe 128 uh, or something like that size. So the, we generally don't associate that information uh, with each pixel, rather it's more uh, of a higher level information, something like uh, there's a cat or there's a dog. Then we, are, we aren't talking about specific pixels, we are talking about uh, uh, a part of that image rather than um, 
just specific pixels, right? So we uh, don't associate that information with each and every pixel, which uh, the um, what basically is the idea of this cross modular tension. Um, finally, we uh, we just saw what uh, conditional batch norm is. So, uh, what the problem with conditional batch norm also is that it does not decompose the affine, uh, basically the affine effectiveness properly, uh, the transformations. So we'll see this problem in detail when we talk about the uh, new improvements that they have introduced. So the third set of problems that uh, has been proposed, that has been talked about is the method for ensuring semantic consistency. So uh, part of the task is to generate uh, real, uh, photo real images or images as eye pleasing as possible, but it also, uh, also the part of task is to generate images which are uh, as close to the textual description as uh, possible, right? So uh, that's what is the basic meaning of semantic consistency that we want uh, the image to be as consistent to the textual information as possible. So these are some of the basic methods that uh, are being used uh, in the previous work. DAMSM loss, which is basically deep attention multimodal um, similarity model loss. Then there's cycle consistency, and we have seen the Siamese uh, network way of doing this. So uh, here's another way of doing it. So it's a two-way discriminator in which the image features that are finally uh, generated by the discriminator in the end is used in two ways. First, to see if how good or bad the image is, we find the unconditional loss uh, here by passing it through some convolutional layers. And then we combine this image feature along with the textual features to see how well they both uh, are consistent with each other, how uh, consistent they are. So they are concatenated again, which is a very naive approach as, um, um, as the paper says, and then there are some convolutional blocks and then there's this conditional loss that is obtained. And then finally the conditional and unconditional loss is added together to find the final adversarial loss. We'll see what the problem uh, with this adversarial loss is in detail uh, in a later slide as well. Uh, so basically, again, the problem is that it uses uh, extra network, which results in extra computational cost. Along with that, it increases the training complexity as well because then there are two things to optimize rather than one. And finally, uh, it in their experimentation, it uh, proved to be less efficient as compared to what they were trying to do or something uh, that the evaluation study also makes evident. So we'll see that as well. So these were the different problems that were recognized in previous works or previous research works that has been done uh, in this field. So finally, the uh, sorry, not finally, but next, the uh, deep fusion GAN algorithm itself. So this is the basic overall architecture of the model. So here you can see that the textual information is passed through the text encoder and we get a sentence vector similar to what uh, all the different approaches we have seen. But here you can see that the sentence vector is conditioned uh, to different up blocks. And uh, uh, just to make it clear, this up block is not just the upscaling block, it's something a little more uh, involved than that. We'll see uh, uh, this expand in a while. So uh, the sentence vector is conditioned to all the up blocks, something similar to SD again, where uh, they were using um, conditional batch normalization. So the, it's similar to that, but they have uh, made uh, some considerable changes to that as well. And then the image feature uh, is obtained and finally it's passed through a convolutional layer to get the synthesized image a generated image from the generator network. And then this is directly passed to the discriminator network, uh, which then performs down convolution and using this down blocks, which is similar to uh, other discriminators because we, uh, there, there's not much modification in the discriminator network itself, but uh, there's something called as matching aware zero centered gradient penalty, which is a regularization uh, term introduced. So how this loss is computed and uh, uh, the regularization performed on this loss, that has been changed, but uh, not the discriminator network itself. It hasn't been modified too much. So the synthesized final uh, image is also passed along with the, sorry, uh, that, uh, that is also passed uh, after down, convolu uh, down convolution. And finally, this the adversarial loss is obtained, but the adversarial loss that has been mentioned here and the adversarial loss that can be seen here, these are two different things and we'll see that in a while. 
so uh, these are some of the changes are uh, considerable changes that can be mentioned right now uh, also one considerable change is that you can now see that there's only one generator network and there's only one discriminator network uh, unlike all the different approaches that we have seen so far in prior work uh, there were multiple stacked uh, generator discriminator network but now we only have one generator discriminator network so the first and uh, a very visible change is of course the simplified text to image generation backbone so by backbone it again means the, there's only one generator and one discriminator network rather than progressively using uh, generator discriminator generator discriminator networks so rather than stacking it's just using a single generator single discriminator network so it uses something called as hinge loss which uh, uh, you guys might be familiar if you know about uh, SVM, so the hinge loss is same uh, as that. So it uses that for stabilizing the training process because again, uh, GANs are very difficult to train in that sense. So it basically replaces this uh, stacked architecture where, uh, where the problem was that uh, the generation of next image through the next generator depends heavily on the image generated by the previous generator, right? So uh, the successive improvisation, which uh, if I might call it, uh, can be very heavily affected by the initial generation itself. And one more problem that was uh, noticed is that uh, the, the generation, the final generation, uh, and this, this is something that is not uh, quantitatively noted, but qualitatively noted is that the final generation itself looks something like that uh, the initial uh, image is generated and the details are filled in specific portion. As you can see that, uh, the background is very blurred in this image for uh, the textual description the small bird has a light yellow something uh, breast and brown wings so uh, only that portion has been focused on and rest everything is uh, moved out of focus so that's something that they have noticed uh, qualitatively and as you can see for the same description uh, you can see that the background is still in a little focus or a background is a little more uh, clear as compared to this image and all the details are also filled uh, if uh, hopefully you can see that the details on the wings are also visible that, that's something that they have noticed qualitatively now uh, another change that they have uh, introduced is the matching aware zero centered gradient penalty so what basically uh, it tries to do is if we take a simpler example where we have only uh, one information that is real or fake images um, it basically tries to do something which is which has been shown here is that uh, so for example in the hinge loss the range is from plus one to minus one so this uh, penalty or this regularization uh, step basically tries to move the real images uh, to as uh, as close to the uh, minima of the loss curve as possible so all these are different minimas for different images and it tries to basically move these if images to these minimum points so that is one thing that uh, this is trying to do and another thing that it tries to do is if you will look that without using the uh, gradient penalty uh, this is what the curve looks like so there is uh, uh, there is much change as compared to the uh, as compared to the curve with the penalty so you can see the curve has now smoothened out. So it makes the uh, minimization or convergence process very smooth as compared to as it was before. So these are the two things that they are trying to do. Now, how does this translate to the task that actually is in hand? So there are basically four types of uh, uh, information that can be generated. So there would be fake images with uh, fake descriptions. There would be uh, fake images with actual descriptions. So uh, uh, we will have real images with fake description. We will have real images with the actual description as well. So this point here, which is real image and uh, is actual description. Here, actual description, basically, uh, I mean that description matches with the image. So if the set of image, uh, the pair of image and the sentence match with each other, uh, that is what I'm referring to when I say the real description. So this is the point that we want to move to these parts where, where the loss is minimum. So to the minima of the loss curve, this is where we want to move these points so that uh, our model knows that it has to aim for this and it has to move to this portion that is for the discriminator network. Right. 
and to support that uh, what we earlier saw was a two way discriminator now they uh, are trying to use a one way discriminator and they have introduced using uh, not introduced but they have changed the use of uh, discriminator in the following way that uh, before uh, earlier work used two way discriminator they are just using a one way discriminator in which the in image and the textual information is concatenated again the basic method and then the pass through uh, several convolutional layers and finally the adversarial loss is uh, found out so the adversarial loss in the overall view that uh, was visible was this adversarial loss and not the two way adversarial loss now what what visually is the problem with the two way discriminator is that uh, this here uh, this uh, this part of the two way discriminator is trying to aim towards uh, real and matching uh, images as you can see this is the gamma is aiming towards real and matching images more or less uh, but the other part of the two way discriminator which was basically uh, unconditional uh, loss was trying to find uh, images as eye pleasing or as uh, visually uh, good representation uh, with a visual visually good representation as possible right so this beta term is for that so finally if we add these two vectors together what we get is in this direction the magnitude whatever the magnitude be but it will uh, the vector will point in this direction so basically we want our model to point towards real and matching images but because of this extra uh, loss term what we are now aiming for is not what we actually want to aim for so that's why rather than using the two way discriminator uh, they have chosen to use the one way discriminator itself uh, so that they collectively the both the loss terms collectively don't uh, point somewhere we don't want it want the model to um and then the main uh, introduction of this deep fusion block so basically what the deep fusion block is is something similar to the conditional batch normalization but what they noticed is that uh, batch normalization uh, does not use, utilize the affine uh, transforms very well along with that performing batch normalization is something that resulted in bad performance as well so the reason for this is uh, if intuitively uh, thought that uh performing batch normalization would result in more generic results rather than something very specific to the textual description because we are just normalizing all the different uh, all the different channel all the different uh, um, channels in the feature map so that's why the results obtained were more generic than the than text specific so they basically removed the batch normalization entirely they didn't perform any batch normalization what they rather did was they used the uh, affine blocks so affine tough transformations were performed and so basically this can be called as one affine blocks a uh, block and uh, this was the basic uh, basic uh, idea where the uh, where the condition here uh, uh, the condition visible here is the condition introduced uh, by the textual information so rather than having this one single affine block they uh, form something called as deep fusion block which has multiple affine relu affine relu uh, stacking uh, in which the condition again is basically the uh, condition introduced by textual description so how is this condition then obtained so the condition basically is obtained by uh, perform uh, by using a multi layer perceptron model with a single uh, hidden block for each of the two parameters so these two parameters are uh, multiplied and added with each channel each for, for all the feature maps so at each level uh, in the up block you will see that there's uh, multiple channels and th these multiple channels are then multiplied and added with these parameters and the next uh, uh, next part of the model um, next uh, next part of the process uh, is done so these are the two uh, multi layer perceptron models that are used uh, to condition the channels based on the sentence vector so the basic idea behind using a more deeper uh, of, of um, stacking than using just a single affine relu block is that uh, it will give more opportunity for the condition to sink in it will give a, a better fusion for text image uh, for text textual and info, uh, and image information to uh, just combined together and then also using a deeper network would introduced more non linearity as compared to using a less deep network and this would result in a better 
uh, overall fusion. So that's why they have chosen to use uh, this DF block uh, that they have named it rather than using a single affine block. So basically they removed uh, the conditional, uh, norm, uh, sorry, the batch normalization step. They kept all the, diff uh, all the rest of it and they deepened the network. So this is what they finally arrived at. This is what they call as deep fusion block. So these were the different uh, changes or these were the different uh, nuances that they uh, introduced in the paper and then they performed some experimentation. So the data sets uh, that they used were COCO and CUP200. CUP200 is basically a, a data set of birds of 200 different species with textual information for each bird. Uh, and Coco, as we all know, is a large data set with different object and uh, images can contain multiple uh, object. Uh, a single image can contain multiple objects as within this data set. So the evaluation metric used for Coco was the Fetchett inception distance. So lesser the distance, the better uh, performing model we get. Uh, and for uh, for CUP, we, uh, the, the metric basically used is both inception score and the Fetchett inception distance. So the reason for not using inception uh, score here in COCO is to uh, is referencing to a different paper uh, in which they proved that COCO shouldn't be uh, evaluated with respect to inception score because inception score fails to evaluate COCO uh, as, well, um, as well as it should or as expected. That's why COCO isn't uh, evaluated in using inception score. So these are the different training parameters and conditions used. So they have used a atom optimizer with a beta one parameter with 0, 0.0 and beta two with 0, 0.9. And learning rate for generator and discriminator networks are these. And the number of epochs they trained for CUP 200 is 600 and for COCO being larger data set, they only trained for 120 epochs. So these are the different uh, quantitative results that they obtained. So uh, as you can see that inception score uh, improved considerably from stat GAN to DF GAN, as you can see, but the closest that uh, the closest performance to the proposed method is uh, DM GAN, which uses a memory network. So the use of memory network in DM GAN is to again, try to do something similar to what DF GAN is trying to do is to uh, sorry, not, not DFGAN specifically, the uh, deep fusion block is trying to do is to provide more and more opportunity for text and image fusion to happen. Uh, so it uses a memory network, but here the memory network, which was a separate network is replaced by just a, a smaller multi-layer perceptron uh, models, which uh, are uh, multi-layer perceptron networks, which are uh, fairly easy to train as compared to a complete network, uh, separate network. Uh, just dedicated to that. And uh, in uh, FID scores, so inception distance, you can see uh, DFGAN uh, in COCO performs better. As you can see, the DFGAN performs where considerably better to other attention GAN and DMGAN because these were the different, uh, 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 these, these works were evaluated using FID. So these are the only results that are uh, present and DMGAN still manages to perform better than uh, DFCAN proposed model, but you can see that it still uh, isn't too far as compared and uh, it's better than attention GAN. So some qualitative result, uh, uh, hopefully visible properly. So as you can see, different contextual informations are captured better uh, using the DFCAN model or DFCAN architecture. Uh, so. So some some background information is also captured. So some details are also there, uh, not for just the you know, specific part of image that was uh, described in the textual information, but also uh, something that is uh, other than that. And uh, that, that part of the image is also made in focus. So uh, things like that have improved qualitatively. And for the COCO, data set, you can see uh, that other models almost uh, fail miserably uh, to capture the information when the uh, when the information is not just about a specific part of the image because uh, then this information, something like uh, three boys playing a soccer game on a green soccer field. So the information is not very specific to the 
boys themselves but also the uh, description is about the field uh, speed uh, two people in a speed boat on a body of water so the background should also be focused and the boat should also be focused in uh, as per the textual information so these two models previous model dm gan and attention gan although at uh, dm gan has a better uh, qualitative uh, sorry quantitative metric um, but df gan still as you can see manages to perform a little better uh, as compared to that because still here the image is not as good as uh, the textual description makes it uh, apparent but still the results are better as compared to the dm gan and attention gan models so the evaluation study that they have conducted is uh, with the with respect to the architecture itself first of all and the baseline used for that uh, is the stack text to image uh, gan which employs two way discriminator so basically the stack gan plus plus kind of model and then they progressively replaced parts of the model so here nsb uh, refers to the simplified backbone noble simplified backbone which is the, the idea of using just a single uh, generator discriminator network and then uh, magp is again uh, matching aware zero centered uh, penalty uh, so magp is that and then finally one way discriminator uh, in addition to magp uh, these two go hand in hand so uh, the one way discriminator helps the magp uh, regularization to work well so these two are something that uh, go hand in hand uh, as per the paper so uh, as you can see that uh, the, when the when all these are added together or combined the performance uh, or the inception score improves um, quite well and the imp uh, improvement is quite consistent over different number of epochs so that's one uh, aspect of it and then the different fusion blocks that i was talking about so the up block is basically using two fusion blocks with the up sampling block so as i said that it's not just a simple up sampling block uh, when i showed the model overview but the up block is basically this and this is the final block that we are using in the uh, uh, that we can see in the model overview this is the uh, conditional batch normalization block so as i said that the batch normalization part is removed in the affine block and then to finally obtain the df block multiple affine relu affine relu are stacked together and uh, just using that we obtain the df block so basically the batch normalization part of conditional batch normalization is removed and then the multiple affine and relu are added together this results in a better text image fusion so they have you know, use different combinations and the performance uh, with magp gan with different cp uh, cbn is conditional batch normalization block you can see what the performance is then using the affine block then using cc block which is i think uh, conditional convolution yeah so it's basically conditional and convolution and then finally the df block which is deep fusion block and the one that they are using so almost consistent performance uh, consistently better performance as compared to other so these are the different evaluation studies that they have conducted yeah so that's basically it um, if anybody has any questions